Hi guys and welcome back to another exciting review. Over the last few years I've been using some amazing Nikon lenses in the field like the super small and light 500mm PF lens, the great 600mm lens with the built-in teleconverter, the 800mm PF lens and recently the new 180 to 600mm zoom lens. And while all these lenses worked really well and got me some awesome images, the one that truly stands out and makes me seriously consider a switch from my current gear is this one. The brand new Nikon 600mm f6.3 PF lens. It's so light and small, it's ridiculous. But is it all sunshine and rainbows or are there some serious drawbacks? And how does this lens work with teleconverters? Let's take a look. For years, many wildlife and action photographers around the world have been wanting a small and lightweight yet very capable 600mm prime lens. And it looks like we finally may have gotten one. Nikon already has an amazing lens lineup for us wilder photographers with almost endless options. So did we need another lens added to that? We'll answer that question at the end of this video, but for now let's take a look what makes this lens so special and why I enjoyed it so much in the field. There's no doubt what stands out about this lens is the size and the weight and how easy it is to handle. You can basically handhold it all day long without even getting tired because it's so small and lightweight. Clocking in at just 1.47 kilos or 3.24 pounds and a length of just under 28 centimeters. It weighs roughly the same as the 500mm PF lens, but to use the 500mm PF lens on a Z-Line mirrorless camera like a Z8 or Z9, you also have to use the F to Z adapter, and then the 500mm PF lens actually weighs a bit more than the 600mm PF lens. Compared to the new 180 to 600mm zoom lens, the 600mm PF lens is significantly lighter and smaller. I normally like to use tripods, especially when I shoot with 600mm prime lenses, but in case of this lens, I didn't use a tripod at all. Speaking about attaching the lens to a tripod, it does come with a lens foot that you can also detach. The 600mm PF lens comes with a control or multifunction ring and a manual focus ring, as well as the lens function buttons on the lens and a memory set button as well. The front element of the lens comes in at 95mm. The minimum focusing distance of the lens is 4 meters or 13.1 feet, which is great for 600 millimeter prime lens. However, in the field, I sometimes wished it had been a little bit less. I had a few occasions where I couldn't focus because the subject was simply too close to me. Most of the time, 4 meters is definitely fine and you can get some great shots like of this rail just before it came to close. But you have to keep in mind that with this lens, while it looks small, it definitely behaves like a big prime lens when it comes to the minimum focusing distance. Even though I live on the Sunshine Coast, it does rain here from time to time. And the other day when I was out in the mangroves, it started to pour down heavily on me. But as an S-line lens, the 600mm PF had no issues and also the Z8 kept working very fine in the heavy rain, even though they got pretty wet. With a lens this small, one interesting question is how fast and accurate can it focus? Because in terms of size and weight, it would be an amazing lens for birds and flight and action photography, but that all depends on how well the lens can focus. I put the lens through many different challenges and I'm happy to say that the autofocus in combination with the Z8 was nice and fast, snappy and tracked the birds very well. Of course, I didn't nail every single shot, but for instance, this sequence of oyster catchers on the beach showed how well the combo tracked the bird all over the beach while it was flying up and down and chasing some other birds. And the camera and lens managed to stay on it pretty much the whole time, so I was quite impressed with the outcome. This could be an ideal birds and flight lens. And here's one of my favorite shots from that session, the oyster catcher mid-banking poles against the blue ocean background. On the first evening, just after the lens arrived in the mail, I took it straight out with me to the mangroves and the light was already getting pretty low, but I was pretty keen to try out the lens. And so I had to use very high ISO, low shutter speed. And then I found a tiny, very twitchy bird, the mangrove jerigony. These birds basically never sit still, so they present a great challenge for the autofocus. Overall, I was quite impressed how well the camera and lens managed to stay on the subject in very low light and how sharp and nice the image turned out. Of course, the image was a little bit noisy, but it cleaned up very well with my Pro Sets and Adobe Enhance, and I got to this cleaned up image that is very nice, I'd say. All in all, the autofocus performed very well in all the scenarios that I put it through, like birds in flight, action photography, perch birds, and low light photography. 
Speaking about low light, you guys know already that I love the Nikon image stabilization. The combination of the IBIS in their camera bodies and the VR in their lenses is simply second to none and the best in the market. Your viewfinder is simply rock solid and this lens is no exception. You can do low shutter speed photography and video handheld without any issues. And the other day I took it to the extreme. I was walking through the mangroves again and suddenly saw this osprey sitting on a relatively low tree but from where I was standing I could only get a blue sky behind the bird. I noticed that there was another dead tree not too far from the osprey so I climbed up the tree, stood on the dead tree and started to film the Osprey with the Z8, the 600mm PF lens and the 1.4 extender and it was quite windy as well. Yet I was able to still get some relatively stable footage at 840mm handheld standing on top of a tree. If you use extenders the image stabilization usually gets a little bit worse so getting a video that is relatively stable in these conditions was truly mind-blowing to me and one of the main reasons that I am really tempted by this lens. We all want them but we can't always have them. I'm talking about those amazing days in the field where everything just seems to come together. And yesterday I had one of those days. I went out in the early morning to another patch of mangroves near my house and I didn't have to wait long before I found a pair of variegated fairy wrens. Now these birds hop around very fast through the branches so it's always a challenge to get a nice and clean shot of them but I was happy that I got a few shots and especially this shot of the female I liked a fair bit where she landed on a nice open branch with a nice background and giving me a bit of an attitude with the open beak. But one bird doesn't make a great day yet does it? So I kept walking and just a few meters down the boardwalk I saw two rufous fantails. Normally you don't really get any shots of them because they don't really hang around or they don't pulse very well but these two birds were just chasing each other around so I was able to get a few really nice shots that I liked like this one on the open branch. What stands out the most to me when we look at these images how sharp and detailed the shot are with the 600mm PF lens. And sometimes you have to stop down lenses to get the most sharpness but the 600mm PF lens is razor sharp and nice and detailed wide open already. On my way back I saw another bird that I hadn't seen in my area before, the spectacled monarch. Suddenly two birds landed on the same branch having a little chat to each other. I'm not sure if it's male and female or two males having a bit of a stare off but stopping down in this case allowed me to get both birds sharp in the frame. Pretty stoked with the results I was walking back to the car when just before the car park I saw another bird, a male laden flycatcher that was just catching little bugs and I got a few more nice photos and if we zoom into that again we can see the amazing image quality and sharpness. Of course I also took some photos and videos in my backyard of the ever fighting lorikeets and I have a new visitor, a king parrot and these white headed pigeons so I was also happy to get a few more photos of them but no matter where I took the Z8 and the 600mm PF lens I was getting great and sharp images. I didn't really know what to expect from the combo but it basically over delivered. No matter the lens or camera you're using though it's important that you learn image editing to get the most out of your photos and to be efficient when it comes to editing and I would love to help you with that with my masterclass and my pro sets. My pro sets allow you with just one click to transform your raw files, get great colors and a fantastic starting point for the editing process and in my masterclass I teach you step by step everything you need to know to get the most out of your images. Like I did on this oyster catcher where I balanced out the light, added a little bit of canvas at the top. So if you want to learn all about image editing and improve your own images, make sure to check out my masterclass and pro sets down there in the description, as well as my brand new brush pack that allows you to easier work with custom layers. Of course, for a lens like the 600mm PF lens to be truly feasible in the field and potentially even replace a big f4 600mm prime lens, it also needs to work well with teleconverters. I didn't have one at hand but a great follower of mine Stefan was happy to lend me his for a few days so thanks a lot for that. He lives on an island so right after I picked up the teleconverter I went straight to the beach and found a few red cap plovers in the sand. So I put the camera as close to the ground as possible, had the teleconverter on and fired away. It was somewhat late in the morning so I had to deal with a little bit of heat haze but in the end I got some really nice and sharp images. So the teleconverter definitely passed its first test. Remember the tree that I climbed up to film the Osprey? Well I didn't only film it but I also took some photos with the 1.4 extender attached and again when we zoom into these files we see some fantastic nice and sharp image quality. 
Normally with teleconverters, I always say that you should stop down at least one stop. But again, with the 600 millimeter PF lens and the 1.4 extender attached, I did not see much of a difference whether I was shooting wide open or stop down with the teleconverter. So the main reason for stopping down with this lens would be to get more depth of field because 600 millimeter 6.3 or 840 millimeters f9 doesn't give you a lot of depth of field, especially when you're close to your subject. However, teleconverters is definitely one area where you run into some limitations with a lens that's wide open at f6.3. And this is where the f4 lenses definitely shine because you can put a 1.4 extender on your wide open at f5.6 and you put on a two times extender your wide open at f8. Whereas with the 600 millimeter pf lens you're wide open at f6.3 with the 1.4 extender you're wide open at f9 and with the two times extender you're already wide open at f13 which is not really ideal anymore and definitely requires a lot of light and higher isos. So in that regard, a big lens like the 600mm f4TC lens or even the 800mm 6.3 PF lens will have an advantage over this lens, but all in all, even with the extenders, the lens performed very well as well. As you know, I've used many different Nikon lenses over the last few years and they're all great, but this one definitely stands out to me. For instance, when I compare it to the 500mm PF lens, I enjoy the fact that it's basically the same weight, or actually lighter because you don't have to use it with the adapter, gives me 100 millimeters more, and it has much better image stabilization. So these three things definitely make me like the new lens better. However, when it comes to pure image quality, the new lens might have a slight edge, but the 500 millimeter PF lens was definitely no slouch when it came to sharpness. If we compare the 600 millimeter PF lens to the new 180 to 600 millimeter zoom lens, there's a few obvious differences, of course. First of all, we can't zoom at all, so we're less flexible, we have a larger minimum focusing distance, and because it's an S-line lens, we also have a much larger price tag. However, the lens is much smaller, much lighter, has slightly better VR and autofocusing, and overall has sharper files and slightly better image quality. So while the 600mm PF lens outperforms the 180 to 600mm zoom lens, the zoom still has some advantages, especially because it's so much more flexible and costs a lot less. There's another great PF lens in the Nikon lineup, the 800mm lens, and I find it very hard to compare these two lenses, and it comes down to personal preference, I think. Personally, I like 600mm for my kind of photography the most. I find 800mm too much a lot of times. For instance, I couldn't even photograph in my backyard with an 800mm lens. I would only be able to get like headshots pretty much. So I like the flexibility of the 600 millimeter lens because I can get to 840 and sometimes 1200 millimeters, but also have 600 millimeters. But in saying that, if you know that you always need 800 millimeters and beyond, the 800 millimeter PF lens is probably the better choice. Compared to the f4.5 400 millimeter lens, the 600 millimeter PF lens is of course bigger and heavier, but the differences are actually not that dramatic and you get an extra 200 millimeters. All in all, I'm having a great and successful time with the 600mm PF lens in the field. It has super fast autofocus, is nice and sharp and handles really well. And even though I prefer an f4 600mm prime lens in most cases, I know that if I owned this lens, I would likely use it most of the time simply because it's so easy to handle in the field and you can handhold it all day, yet still get really nice and sharp images. It will be available from the end of October and cost around 4,799 US dollars and here in Australia it will cost 8,500 dollars. So it's definitely not a cheap lens but for instance only cost a third of the 600mm TC lens so having a big prime lens shrunk into this tiny yet very capable package is definitely worth at least a consideration for me. Is it worth it for you? Is this a worthwhile addition to the already great Nikon lens lineup for us wildlife photographers? Are you going to get one? Make sure to let me know in the comments. Also give me a thumbs up for the video and subscribe down there. And I will see you in the next video very soon. Bye.